And as you say that, let's kind of switch to the other side. Now we get to the job seeker. Mm -hmm. And the job seeker is coming in with unclear expectations. Right. Um, the, the job posting is not really clear. Mm -hmm. You know, it just says, for the sake of everyone knowing, uh, it just says administrative assistant must type 45 words a minute. Didn't say accurate. Very just basic. <laughs> <laughs> it just said you must type. Um, and again, someone comes in, they say, I can do this. So now let's switch roles. How does the responsibility change for the job seeker? What is the job seeker's responsibility to the recruiter? First and foremost, the job seeker has a responsibility to himself and whichever company he ends up working for in taking a step back and figuring out exactly what he or she wants to do and hey I just need a job I, I just need a job that's the problem that a lot of job seekers have yes. is they have that short-term mentality they'll say oh I can do anything or I'll do anything I just need a job mm -hmm. and that might be a short-term fix but it doesn't tend to lead to longevity or really truly effectiveness or success in a career sure. mm -hmm. And I think the point is the majority of the population is paycheck centric. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm bringing in a check, mm -hmm. as long as I'm punching the clock every day and being able to take care of my family, I'm good. And we need to change that perception. Okay. Now, is that recruiter's responsibility or career coaches? Either or. Not everybody can afford a career coach. Not everybody's going to turn to a recruiter and use them as a tool <coughs> or a resource Correct. as opposed to just the person that's interviewing me. That's how a lot of job seekers look at recruiters. But I find that if you if you sit down with your recruiter, whether it's an internal recruiter or a third party recruiter, they can be your strategic ally to help you kind of craft your strategy and your goals and your long term plan. And unfortunately, with the economy being the way that it is, a lot of people are not on that level. Right. Okay. And so. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and that's true because as far as the uh, candidate mm -hmm. that's seeking that position, it's their job to the recruiter to give them every little detail about their position that's relevant mm -hmm. to that actual position because we don't want to know that you worked at McDonald's mm -hmm. when you were unless the you were actually <laughs> in human resources at McDonald's or whatever uh, actual uh, AA position for McDonald's, then give us that. But I don't want to know that you were dumping fries. That's not relevant to the position. Mm -hmm. So the client must understand and realize they need to give the recruiters exactly what's relevant to the position, fill in the gaps, and go from there. Now as far as the mindset um, and the professional career goals, I will agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. Today's economy has dictated that. It's not a matter of, let me get up the ladder now. It's a matter of, let me just hold on to my job. Mm -hmm. So people are just going day by day because you go into your job today, you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. Absolutely. Because these companies, are a lot of companies now are no longer loyal. Sure. Right. They're not loyal. So it's common to now see people on resumes jumping from job to job because companies are not loyal, mm -hmm. uh, employees or, or Corporate associates are not loyal because the ones that have that professional mindset that I want to go up the ladder, they will jump right. and because they want that higher title. They don't want that title in the lateral position. They want the title and the money. Mm -hmm. So they will jump ship. Mm -hmm. But the candidate that's just looking for a job, they're going to... 
Yeah, I know. They're, they're not going to have that. I like to tell parents like that because the same way they have this this um, this need to just get a job right now, right. in the same measure in reverse, that recruiter may have the same need to keep that job. That they have. Mm -hmm. So just because you need a job really bad is that does not outweigh the fact that I need to keep my job. Right. So I'm not going to just uh, my my um, incentive is to present the best candidate possible. Correct. That'll make me look good. Correct. And that happens to be you. Great. If not. Then I'm gonna have to look out for myself. I have to feed my family Correct. too at the end of the day. Correct. Correct. I think the yeah. biggest burden falls on the job seeker. Okay. Because the job seeker is expected to, and you know, in today's market, it's a employer's market. You're going to have to be out there um, applying for tons and tons of jobs, and you're going to have to tailor each resume towards that job because employers aren't going to want to see, like you were saying, employers don't want to see irrelevant things they right. want they want they have to go through 600 resumes for one job they're going to just want to see why this person is going to fit this job description so it's really the biggest burden falls on the job seeker um, he has he or she has the most to um, lose or gain from this whole process so it's, it depends on them to contact the recruiter to remain in contact with the recruiter and give the recruiter as much information as possible um, and to work closely with them. And also I think in this, there's for me, there's no excuse in this day and age of technology and social media to not figure a way to brand yourself. I don't care if you're a receptionist, I don't care if you're an executive assistant, I don't care if you're a CEO or a mm -hmm. CFO, you, there are so many ways for you to brand yourself right. these days. And you need to figure out how do I take my resume, my experience at McDonald's, and take the hard skills that I learned from that mm -hmm. and show that they're transferable. transferable. So Absolutely. whereas I may not want to see that they dump fries, I want to see, well, how did you deal with the customers? Correct. How did you handle stress? How did you handle sticky situations? Mm -hmm. So figure a way to take what looks like just, hey, I just worked at McDonald's and show how you excelled. So I look at all of that and, and I know I'm not all recruiters are the same. Everybody has their different little quirks or whatever. I'm looking at the total package. I want to know what did you bring from that experience. Right. And if you can't, as a, as a job seeker, tell me what experience you bought from that that's relevant that you can bring into an admin role or whatever role it is, then you're doing yourself a disservice. I think it starts with figuring out who you are as a job seeker, what your goals are, and what hardcore skills you can bring to the table that you know you can impress this employer with, as opposed to saying, here's my resume. Right, yeah. right. Now, may I ask a question? Absolutely. Now, as a candidate, here's where the dilemma comes into play. And this is something over the years, many years back, that I would experience. My information or my credentials would be presented to a recruiter but the recruiter really didn't know how to recruit. Mm -hmm. As far as other than Tell picking you. up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but they really did not know what they were looking at. Right. So yeah. if I'm a radio personality, for example, the radio personality falls under customer service because right. as a radio personality, you have to appease the audience. Absolutely. 24-7 while you're on the air and off Absolutely. In the public, in the community, your life is no longer private. Absolutely. So you have to always Absolutely. be on top of your P's and Q's <laughs> customer service wise, 24-7. Mm -hmm. But you will find a lot of recruiters um, and a lot of hiring managers cannot relate the two. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of people that's saying, okay, I'm looking for this person for this position. Well, it only has this on here. That's what's aggravating to me because I know how to read mm -hmm. a resume and read between the lines. Correct. Okay. But you have a lot of recruiters that have no clue Can I take how to read between the lines. Yes. Okay. Please let me take that one, <laughs> then I'll let you take it, Jen. Okay. First of all, the problem is any and everybody can become a recruiter. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I think it's about just placing bodies in jobs. I've so always I've been, seen people like that. thank you, I've always been of the mindset that we are not just recruiters, 
We are career counselors. We are guidance. We, we show guidance to people. We help mold and cultivate people. Mm -hmm. We need to understand not just our hiring managers and hiring managers' needs, but we need to be able to look, like I just said a few minutes ago, look at a resume and see those skills kind of jump through right, right. and say, this is why. Because then I'll admit, there have been times when I've had a resume and I said to my manager, you need to talk to this person. Yeah. And they'll look at the resume and say, mm -mm. I'm like, uh, -uh don't let the right. fool you. Right. Right. Let me tell you what this person has brought, brought to the table. You need to understand what they have inside them that makes them right for this position. And as a recruiter, if you can't articulate in 30 seconds or less why this candidate is right for your position, why are you recruiting? It's not just about pulling jobs, um, resumes off a monster. Right. You have to get into the mindset and understand your candidate and know how to uh, match make. Exactly. It's about relationships and right. building and bridging. Exactly. So I think that it should be regulated, and I'm not disparaging any institution, right. but I think those air certifications are not, every, everybody's such a t on a tear about getting air certification. It doesn't prove that you can recruit. It right. proves that you can look up Google and source and, and know how to keyword search. It does not get to the heart of it. And that's what Sorry, recruiters, me. employers need to invest in education and training for their recruiters. That's my And soapbox. that is key. <laughs> that is key because that's the <laughs> training that I've wanted to perform, mm -hmm. actually showing recruiters how to read between the lines. Just basic reading between the lines of Resume 101. Yeah. And I do recruiter training. So I, I have a, an, an intense boot camp that I put people through because I have a standard. I've been doing this for 19 years, so it's like, I'm not asking anybody to be like me, but if you can't master the basics, then you need to go get a different job. Right. So. Yeah, an, indus an industry standard for uh, recruiters nationwide uh, is sort of like a pipe dream. That it's been ah. out there for a while. I mean, I've, I've written about it, and not, there are some organizations that they have a, a certain certification, uh -huh. but it's not like a blanket one. Like, there's a, a blanket one for um, uh, for doctors. Mm -hmm. There's a blanket one for beauticians, I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's not one for recruiters, which is essentially a very uh, important role. Yeah. Right. You know. So um, an article that, I, that Steph and I were talking about before, I was saying how it's just too easy to be a recruiter, it's not a standard, and it should be. Uh, but to, uh, to, uh, to a Candace's point, though, if from a job seeker's perspective, if they, um, it would probably be in their best interest to research different recruiters who specialize in their field. I mean, a lot of people think recruiter, just recruiter. You know, but there's military recruiters, there's executive recruiters, technical recruiters, what have you. I would suggest they go on LinkedIn do a search for recruiters and then do a search for recruiters that have been looking who've been working in that particular field that they specialize in for a certain number of years because not only will they uh, understand exactly what you're doing after rec uh, recruiting for so long but it may be network of other people as well so I would say to the job seeker take your time and, and uh, research different recruiters uh, as well instead of just being on receiving it. That gets to a very good point also that a lot of job seekers don't realize what the true role of a recruiter is they might meet a recruiter and think that their job as a recruiter is to find that person a job, whereas right. their job is actually to fill that position for their client, the candidate. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. And so as we come to a close, um, we, I want to just ask maybe three more questions, and then we will um, bring this segment to a close. Let's talk about some of the uh, job seeker gripes, which is kind of... Um, where we, where we didn't touch on. Um, one of the things that they said to us when we were out polling people is the recruiter doesn't call back. So let's briefly talk about whose responsibility is what at that point of the job search process. Or, you know, you get the one phone call that says I have the perfect position for you. And those of us who are on this end, we know that we're looking at 10 or 12 resumes for one position. But the recruiter is calling saying, I have the perfect position for you. And for the job seeker who does not or may not know the actual process, they believe that. Mm -hmm. I have the perfect position for you because that's what they've been told. Mm -hmm. And then either, um, you know, they're, well, when the recruiter is calling, they're making sure that you're available, doing some screening, et cetera. And they say, okay, well, I'd love to submit your, uh, your resume to my client or to my candidate or to my hiring manager. Mm -hmm. And they're on pins, well, not pins and needles, but they're all excited about it and then they never hear back. So what can we do about our responsibility to the job seeker that says, hello, you made the connection with me and now I can't even reach you anymore. Or after they've gone out to interview with the client and neither the client 
nor the recruiter calls the job seeker back. So where does the responsibility lie there? Because they've tried to reach out to you. I feel like that the responsibility there is still with the job seeker. Like I said, the job seeker holds the biggest uh, or the biggest burden in this whole process. And I've, I've hired people based solely on if when I'm looking at two candidates, well, this person called me, or this person sent me a thank you note, or this certain person said, and, and that's been my decision maker. Okay. So um, th I think that burden is on the um, the job okay. seeker himself. That's that's largely, yeah. yeah. That, that squeaky wheel gets the oil that's cliche. True. Yeah. That's true. To an extent, uh -huh. you got you've got that borderline where you're between persistence and being an annoyance yes. as well. If, yes. if, I'm, if I'm a job seeker and I've gotten that call from the recruiter says, hey, I've got this job that's perfect for you, you're perfect for this, I'm going to present you the candidate. If I've gone in and interviewed, if I've provided the recruiter with everything they've needed in order to help me, in order to help them get that position filled and I'm the right candidate and I don't hear anything, I What's start to wonder why. Yes. Well, but yeah, if I yeah. haven't done everything, then I'm wondering why. Exactly. <laughs> First of all, I think that we need to take that perfect, that word perfect out of That's our vocabulary. Exactly what was going we on. should not be telling a candidate I have the ideal role because you're setting that expectation from on day one that, that this I, job is mine. Yes, right. yes exactly. Right. So the onus is on us. We need to watch the way we approach candidates when we do the approach them. Exactly. The Clean up the language and you know there's a position that I have you in mind for. Okay. I would like to submit you. You know, let me get a little bit of information about you first and let's see where we can go from there. I never make any promises about any, I don't even guarantee interviews. Mm -hmm. I tell them it's exploratory. Let's see if there's a fit. I'll submit you to the candidate. If they're interested, we can mm -hmm. move forward from there. Mm -hmm. Either way, you'll hear back from me. I have a problem with recruiters who use that other approach and say we have the perfect position or I'll be in touch and then you never hear never from me. Mm -hmm. um, my staff is, t is trained to, regardless of what stage a person is in the interview process, if they even just submit their resume, everybody gets a call. And I know that a lot of a lot of, a lot of uh, employment offices and, and HR offices don't have the manpower to do that. Right. But it is your responsibility to build your brand because sometimes it's the first time somebody is coming in contact with your company. Yes. Unless it's like a Nike or big time well-known brand. This is the first line of defense. How you handle this sets the tone for the rest of the way. So we need to be careful what we say, how we approach candidates, and make sure that we're giving consistent feedback. And then for the candidate side, like you said, stay consistent with the follow-up right? until you hear something different. Exactly. And these days with technology, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. With, with technology these days, I mean, it's easy to set up a simple autoresponder auto that automatically emails every candidate who submits a resume. And what I've seen with a lot of them is, that, is they have these little short blurbs that are just bland, generic, yeah. thanks, we received your resume. That's it. Yeah. You can go into a little bit more detail tell them that there is a lot of competition for that job. Mm -hmm. If it's a great fit, somebody will be in touch with you shortly and see what, see how things can move on from there. I would like to see an automated message that says, you know what, we haven't hired anyone, we're still in the process, just mm -hmm. FYI. Mm -hmm. Well, I know a lot of your larger companies will use um, you know, organizations like Taleo and places like that, but they still are not taking the time to go back mm -hmm. and say this is where we are in the process. We right. do have an autoresponder that Let's you know when you've been dropped out of, um, or dropped out of the pool. Okay. Or it lets you know if you've been moved up in the pool or something like that. So it does let you know where you currently are, and I think that's really important to a job seeker. But I've also heard feedback it's not necessarily reliable because if I have a, a pool of, like I said, 600 candidates, um, you may get an autoresponder saying yes, you you've been sent to a hiring manager, your resume has been sent to mm -hmm. a hiring manager, when in reality the hiring manager isn't looking at the 600, right. you mm -hmm. know what I mean? They're only looking ah. at five of them. Correct. <laughs> Correct. 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 So all that boils down to taking the time to do it right. Yes. Yeah. And with that autoresponder, my biggest issue with that is don't send an autoresponder that says I'm not qualified. Thank you. Mm. That drives me mm. crazy. I hate all because those that is so incorrect. Mm -hmm. I'm very much qualified. Yeah. Just say that you found a candidate more, more that would you felt would be more suited. Now more suited could be personality wise because a lot of times candidates don't realize your credentials already say what you 
can and can't do. Correct. Now the live interview says personality wise, are you going to yeah. be a good fit for this team? Yeah. Sure. Right. So do your values mesh with the companies? Right. Are you going to be a fit right. in that culture? Right. Are we on the same scale? Are we on the same parallel plane as far as mission, vision, goals, strategies? So I can handle. Uh, we found someone that yeah. seems to be more suited to the position, but to say I'm not qualified that is that tears a person down. Yeah, and it goes back Especially to the when they look at their, right. Yeah, it goes back to the, what I was saying about training your recruiters because I I love Taleo. That's my favorite. <laughs> BTS, but it is not a replacement for my responsibility as right. a human being. That right. is right. I do not believe in autoresponders. I think they're they're rooted in personal. I think they're crass. Pick up a phone and and it's it, I can say it's tested and it works for my company because I have people that are I can't believe I got a phone call to say I didn't get a job this is the first time I've ever gotten and that if they want to and especially you have to be cognizant in this type of economy that we're in now people are already like you said beat down and dejected and they right. feel like they're worthless right. what is three seconds of your day picking up a phone and calling and saying hey I'm sorry you know we got your resume but you're not a fit for this particular position but you know what go to www blah 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 and stay posted let me know if there's something that comes up that's all some people want to hear sometimes right and you know what and technology mm -hmm. has it's totally weeding out human relation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's making us human yeah. relations. Mm -hmm. That's key. Right. Mm -hmm. That's key in any position. Period. Because the computers and software and hardware can only do so much. Right. It's going to be direct, blunt, to the point. This is what it is. This is what it's not. This is what things are going to be. Right. Yeah, but human relation can finesse mm -hmm. and change the whole mindset or the whole relationship. Right. Yeah, so that one just makes just just makes it more efficient. Mm -hmm. Whereas the the human relations is where the actual thought has to come in to make it make sure the technology works right. Yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. Anybody's email can be directed to spam by accident. They right. have never gotten it. Exactly. You know, I've had people who weren't a fit that I called and say, "Hey, you're not a fit." However, I'm working on this position, and mm -hmm. you know, it's it's you have that chance to build that relationship, and the risk of starting crash. Get referrals right, right. from your candidates. So mm -hmm. I mean, right. it, it makes perfect sense. It makes business sense. And it makes branding sense mm -hmm. for us as recruiters to put that human element back into the recruiting process. So, mm -hmm. so as we um, surmise, we're really saying that everyone still has a role. Mm -hmm. That everyone still has a role from the top to the bottom, mm -hmm. and that we all have to effectively jump into our roles and execute our roles. And I think um, one of the things that I happened to see, uh, especially when I was heavily doing career coaching, is that the job seeker always thought that it was our responsibility mm -hmm. to get them hired. Um, you know, our responsibility to sell them. Our responsibility to make sure, you know, kind of really hand-holding. Mm -hmm. And so, I guess what we're saying to our job seekers is that you need to have more control over your career path. And then I guess what we're saying to our employers is that you need to be really clear about what you need. And I think one of the things is that a lot of people don't take into account the cost mm -hmm. that is associated with recruiting. You know, when you think about what it costs to run an ad, when you think about the manpower that it costs, you know, to interview or to bring people in, and then of course, you know, my job is not getting done unless, well, you know, those of us who have the multiple role. But if you, you know, if you're just a recruiter, then yes, it's your job to source and whatever. But if you are doing an HR position and recruiting happens to be part of your function, that means that there's something else over here that you're not able to do at the moment because you're recruiting. And so all of these different things that go into the entire recruiting process means that everybody has to have ownership in their individual responsibilities. And so I think that we definitely, us as a, as a body, and my whole purpose for getting um, all of us together from all different walks was to say, we hear you. We hear you, we understand you, but you still have a responsibility. 
And thank you for voicing your opinions to us because now we know what you're feeling as a job seeker. And so we can come back now and we can say, okay, I can call. Yes, I can. I can email. Yes, I can. I, I can do a little bit of something. So I want to thank you all again for talking to me today about the recruiter's responsibility. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. partnership any way you look at it between the employer and the recruiter and the, the candidate and I think everybody falls to defaults to the other person having responsibilities well it's not it's a recruiter's job the recruiter says no it's the hiring manager manager job the candidate says no it's the recruiter's job to get me recruited <laughs> and it's like this big mess and it's like no stop everybody has a role right yeah. Yeah, that's right. exactly yeah. what it is. Right. Right. And time and responsibility for whatever you've got. Yeah. Right. Until you take yeah. charge of your career. And exactly, right. especially in, in high, the higher up, and I don't know if you guys have seen this, the higher up the position or the status, the worse the candidate is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a CFO. Oh, yeah. right. You need to market me. The, can, the yeah. candidate I, I, would, I think has the perception that you're working for them or yes. something right. like that. Right. Yes. 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 And, and I felt that, my, felt that myself early on in my career too. I mean, yeah. when I was changing jobs years back, I was wondering why I hadn't heard from a recruiter, especially one that was right in the field that I was looking for a job in. Right. Yeah. And I was like, well, why hasn't he found anything for me yet? Yeah. Right. Right. And and you forget because I just didn't that know. the <laughs> job, the responsibility is on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just happen to possibly have an opportunity of vape. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the responsibility is on the candidate to, yes, just yeah. like you said, yeah. progress and, and dictate their mm -hmm. career. Mm -hmm. That's very true at its core, and they don't teach you that in school. They don't. No, and they absolutely don't. The game not. changes <laughs> continually, I and mean, the job search game is totally different now than it was five years ago, yeah. ten years ago, twenty years ago. Yeah. And especially, like you mentioned, with the CFOs, I mean, if they reached that position, they may have been in, the, in that role of a previous job for a long time right. and the last time they changed jobs maybe it was more the recruiter's job to find right. that but role. now also and that's a dilemma that I'm questioning when you have recruiters that have been recruiters for 20 plus years or 15 plus is the recruiter transforming with the times mm. are they flowing with mm. the times as far as okay no you're not gonna see 10 years with the company anymore. No, you're not going to see 15 years with the company anymore. Mm -hmm. You'll be lucky to see two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So That's good. you have right. resumes, no longer the one page resumes anymore. Right. Yeah. You have to, they're going to be two and three pages a lot of times because people have bounced around mm -hmm. due to either being laid off or seeking a higher position or a better opportunity. You're gonna have that jump around now. Or relocation. And then, so what is the what is, what is, what is, right. and my question right. will be, what is the level that you're looking for? What's the time frame that's acceptable to, to jump travel. around? Yeah. Would a recruiter say, Okay, well you were in this position for two years, that's not that long. Or you were in a position for a year. That? That? I mean what would be the, the oh. what would you say is the standard now? Well, I, I typically recruit a lot of uh, technical uh, personnel. Okay. So it's, it's not unusual to see okay. two two years, three years, or six months of their contract. Right. Okay. You know, it really depends on the type of job. Like you're saying, you're technical, you're always going to have um, that, that cost of job. Not, you know, you're not going to find longevity in a technical thing. But I'm totally glad that it is here. Stay here long yeah. enough right. to get the project done. Right, right. right. Yeah. I, work, right. <laughs> I work in the educational system where we thrive off um, finding that longevity. Right. And we won't hire people that don't have that longevity with somebody. If they've hopped around a little bit, okay, but we have to see in their resume something that says something that shows them that they will um, stay commit. And the another thing I find is let's switch it to recruiters. When you're recruiting recruiters to work for the companies, I see a lot of asinine ads out there that says you have to be English certified or you have to know uh, how to do Google sourcing and things like that. 
there are so many different tools and resources that recruiters have at their arsenals. The number one thing is, do you have relationship building and personality skills? Right. That's what I mean. I don't care if you've taken up airs. All that shows me is that you can sit through their boring eight hour, <laughs> you're not <laughs> recording this, are you? You're able to you learn. learn. You're able to yeah, learn. But you, you can sit through a class for eight hours. Right. That's not telling me how you are as a recruiter, right. how you're adaptable to different industries, how you understand how, like Jim said, Technical people are going to jump around. Right. Right. How in education they might be a little longer. So as a recruiter, you need to have that knowledge base right. to do your job effectively. So don't ask for something that you don't already bring to the table. This issue of Career Magazine TV is brought to you by the Wisdom Knot and also sponsored by the National Association of Women-Owned and Small Businesses Incorporated. To find out how you can sponsor an episode of Career Magazine, call us at 404-604-4511.